My name's Sophie Osborne, a member of the graduating class of 2018. It's an honour to welcome you to the first episode of The Lion and the Thistle. We are currently at Glenbrae, the spiritual birthplace of the Presbyterian Girls College, which opened its doors for the first time on the 5th of February 1918. Over the next 12 months, you will hear from different members of our Scots PGC College family. Students, teachers and family members will take you back and explore our rich history, but also celebrate the future of our wonderful school. It is from these humble beginnings at PGC and then the amalgamation with its brother school, the Scots College, decades later, that we have created a truly community-based learning institution for the Southern Downs region and beyond. Before we look back to those formative years, we must first acknowledge the important work of the late Brisbane historian and author, Basil Shaw, whose research was an important resource for this series. In 1993, 25 years ago, The Lion and the Thistle, A History of Scots PGC College Warwick, 1918 to 1992 was released. Uh, it was probably uh, three or four years um, uh, before the, the publication. Um, the, um, uh, we accepted the uh, 1918 as the start of the college because the uh, PGC, of course, was started before the, the uh, boys' school. Um, we think the reason was that uh, the local uh, Presbyterian families were quite happy to send their sons away to boarding school, but they, for their daughters, they wanted a school uh, that their daughters could attend as, as day students. So we, we accepted the the opening of PGC as the, the date for, for the 75th anniversary and we set about trying to uh, uh, find a, a suitable historian. Um, initially Basil Shaw was not available um, and uh, we uh, tentatively um, uh, chose uh, another person uh, unfortunately, my sense of humour upset him and he resigned. Um, but it worked out very well in the long run because by that time um, Basil was free to, to uh, take up the, uh, the role of uh, historian. The, I should add that the, his job was made a lot easier by the establishment of the archives and it was my wife Beverly who was responsible for that. Uh, and she'd been uh, compiling and organising the, the archives uh, for uh, a few years before Basil started his research and um, he found it very useful to have all that historical material uh, organised and uh, easily accessible. A few years before our college founders, Mr B.T. de Conley and Mr R.J. Shilliday, established our school, they were quite vocal in their wish to send their daughters to a Presbyterian school in Warwick rather than Toowoomba. By 1917 they were really starting to gain momentum when at a public meeting in Gundawindi, Shilliday and De Conley explained how a noted Presbyterian businessman and philanthropist, Mr W.R. Black of Brisbane, had discussed the possibility of establishing a girls' school on the Southern Downs. Shilliday went on to explain that Mr Black was prepared to subsidise the establishment of the college to the extent of £1,000 for every £2,000 raised by the local community. The efforts of the de Conleys and Shilliday in canvassing Presbyterian families on the Southern Downs were rewarded when a report in the Warwick Daily News of 21st of July 1917 headlined Remarkable Response Appeal for Funds advised that the committee had decided that the school would open in February 1918, following donations of £3,300, which was to be subsidised by Mr Black's £2,000. The Presbyterian Girls' College was born. 
Miss Constance Magnus was 35 years old when she took on the role of Presbyterian Girls College foundational principal and to this day is probably the most significant principal in the 100 years for Scots PGC College as she served PGC right up to the age of 67 before her retirement. Miss Magnus was joined by Miss Marion McLean, Miss A.O. Thorne and Miss Met McLean to make up the first ever teaching staff of the Presbyterian Girls College. Following the appointment of the new teaching staff, the first students were welcomed into the school on the 5th of February 1918. In Term 1, 53 students were enrolled at PGC, and initially, day students like myself outnumbered boarders at the school, but by 1920, boarders would make up the majority of the student population. Although PGC was primarily a girls' school, it allowed boys to the age of 10 years to attend kindergarten and primary school. In 1918, there were nine boys enrolled at PGC. The very first enrolled student of PGC was Alison de Conley, BT de Conley's daughter, who like many students in years to come, would also have a strong association with PGC. Alison was appointed to the role of school captain, then she was also elected secretary treasurer of the Past Students Association following her graduation from PGC in 1921. He was just probably the most charming, delightful, wonderful grandfather that anyone could have, wouldn't you say? I'd agree with you, yeah. Yes, and, when we, and he was a great uh, storyteller. And so and every Christmas we'd go, come in from the bush and come to lovely, cool Warwick and then we'd all go to the family beach house at Malulaba. And so in that time, uh, uh, he'd, uh, he'd tell us all these stories that he'd... He was just a charming man. Lots of friends, lots of, you know, and lots of interests, you know, so belonged to all these... He was the mayor of Warwick at one stage, all that sort of stuff. But he, 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 he just loved children, he loved his grandchildren. Uh, the de Connellys were great bookish people. And we had this special old couch at Gunnawarra where our property was. And uh, from the time that we could sit up beside my mother, my sister and I, and she'd read to us every evening, you know, when we had our early uh, meal before we had the, before the grown-ups went off and had their dinner and we were put to bed. And so we'd been exposed to the very best reading and making it live. And, and so we went on to become great readers, didn't we? Mm -hmm. For the rest of our lives. His job was he was superintendent of AMP for the whole of South West Queensland. In he his travels around South West Queensland. Charming. In, in sort of 1910, 1912, 1914, he could see the necessity of establishing a couple of boarding schools in Warwick to cater for those country children. And uh, that's what that was the, the germ that got started in his head and that's when he carried it on from there. PGC experienced great growth in the 1920s due to growing enrolment numbers prior to the Great Depression. It included the extension of the boarding facilities with the addition of WRB House, another generous donation from WR Black. It would be his final donation to his beloved PGC prior to his death a short time later. With the formation of the Scots College the following year in 1919, the two schools would continue to have social and academic interactions over the next 20 years and beyond. The sporting pursuits of PGC students was an important part of their development and the school offered many different options to the girls, both competing within the local competitions and even playing sports like tennis with the Scots boys. Music and arts associated with the theatre were very popular at PGC because an educated woman was supposed to be able to play the piano and perhaps sing or write poetry. Although the onset of the Great Depression in the late 20s and early 30s did affect the enrolment numbers of both PGC and Scots students, it wasn't as significant as other schools. The reputation of PGC had many families maintaining their daughters' enrolments at the school 
right into the mid-30s, despite the economic hardships of that period. By the late 1930s, the school was well on its way to establishing itself as a place of education excellence in the local region. Our, our, our history is incredibly important as an independent school um, and a school of such long standing. Um, Scott's PGC's history really defines it um, and we should be very proud of our history. It's not something other schools can have or, or imitate, um, it's something that's quite unique to us and uh, certainly having the history of PGC being 100 years this year and Scott's next year as 100 years allows us to, to, to extend our celebrations. But again, I, one of the things I really want for our school is for Scott's PGC to be proud of who it is, to stand for um, it's, uh, the values that we have, um, its foundation in Christian, um, Christian teachings, um, its production of good people over an extended period of time. I want Scott's PGC to be Scott's PGC, not to try and be like another school um, because we're, we're really unique and not many schools have a hundred years of history. Um, the history is important and it, and it sort of defines currently who we are but it also shouldn't restrict us as, our move, as we move forward. The other opportunity we have with our centenary is for Scott's PGC to look forward and say okay how are we going to evolve now over the next hundred years? What are the next things that are important to our growth whilst respecting our past? and I think that's the challenge that we currently have. Thanks for joining us for the first episode of The Lion and the Thistle. Until next time, remember we're always aiming higher.